Welcome back to Avon Valley Church YouTube channel. This week we'll be discussing free will, a continuation from last week. If God is love, why is there so much pain and suffering? Hope you'll join us for this discussion on the panel. All right, let's discuss that question then. Um, if God is in control, do we really have free will? But before we do that, let's meet our panel today. We've got Brother John, Brother Des, and Pastor Max. Before we, do, we get into the discussion, I just wanted to find out some thoughts on last week's question. If God is love, why is there so much pain and suffering? What are your thoughts on this question, Brother John? I think because we have a freedom of choice, we have to go through trials and tribulations in our own lives to realise where we have gone wrong. Um, if somebody's always telling us where and how and what to do, we're not learning and we're not growing in our own lives. Uh, giving you freedom of choice enables us to be able to try to make the right decisions. And sometimes we do have to fall and, and stumble, but at the end, I think it makes us a stronger person by the experiences that we've been through. Thank you, Brother John. Um, now let's get your thoughts on the same um, question, Brother Des. Just to build on Brother John's uh, response to that, the freedom of choice is our, our main reason why. Uh, sometimes we have to accept the consequences of our choices and then our choices are not really sometimes in line with, with God's will. And he sometimes allows us to go through the consequences of our choices because he does say that you know, for whom I love, I do chastise. And another part to it as well, there is other forces that are around and in Ephesians um, 6.12, and I'll just read to you that from uh, Ephesians 6.12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we, we do have other forces that are playing on us as well. And these forces are against God. God is love, but he allows us to um, deal with this, but we, he's also offered us his own strength for us to go through this. So there's pain and suffering, yes, because of the consequences of choices that people make. And sometimes we do uh, get involved or, or be affected by the fallout of other people's choices too. But God ultimately uh, has and it does always give us a way out. Yeah, good point, Des. Um, I think, you know, what you said about um, that whom God loves, he chastises. Um, just like a parent, we love our children, um, but sometimes we allow them to hurt themselves or get hurt um, because we want them to learn and say, hey, and understand that what we, when we actually give them advice or, or um, feedback or we tell, give them um, instruction, that is for their benefit and for their well-being and it's their choice to choose to listen to that and um, if they don't choose to listen to that well we know from life experiences that the choice they make may not be the best for them and I think overall when we look at God and we look at the Bible through the Bible when God gives us instruction it's for our benefit and, um, and it's our choice to do that so while there may be suffering and it's not God causing that suffering but rather the choice that we make causes that suffering and that pain. But if we actually then adhere or listen to God's instruction, you know, there won't be any suffering, there won't be any pain because that's what the end game is for us as Christians, is that when Jesus comes there will be no more suffering, no more pain because God is in control and we allow him to be in control for us. Thank you for that Pastor Max. Some very interesting thoughts there. And what I'm getting is that our choices can influence our level of either pleasure in this world or suffering. First, now let's look at our other question for today. If God is in control, are we really free? All right, so that is the question. 
Now I'll just throw it out to the panel and get some thoughts on this uh, subject. Yeah, that's very interesting, Jason. Um, but when we look at, go right back to see where God created Adam and Eve, whether he created them as robots or created them as free will agents to obey him or disobey him. Well, we go back to uh, Genesis uh, 2, when reading from verse 16 and 17, and we see that, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree in the garden thou mayest freely eat. So we see they are freely eat, they, they weren't restricted, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So there is a choice here, where whether you, they believe that God will, they would die as a consequence of disobeying God, or obeying God and live. Uh, of course, we know when we get to Genesis 3 that they believe Satan's lies instead of God's uh, instruction, and the consequence that they died. And we are in the same position now. We have the knowledge that Jesus had died for us, and because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, and everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, so we are condemned to die. So, but we have a choice because of what Jesus has given us as a gift. So we choose to follow Jesus and live, or we consequently, because we are all sinners, we are going to die. Now control, when we look at, is God in control? Yes, He is in control. He has set everything in place, but He's given us free choice. But we are also in control of our own destiny, and He's given us a path, a way out. So I think, uh, although we know God is in control, but we have a choice to die or live. And of course, but I rest, you know, that why, Paul says, why would you die? Why would you die when you can live? You know, so um, I throw it on the pastor. What do you think? I think um, it's how we understand control. You know, I think we look at control as a negative, from a negative a thing where I'm in charge and no one's allowed to be, no one's allowed to have this, this it's mine. Mm. Um, so, you know, I'm free, post, pre-COVID, I was free to get in my car and go anywhere without the restrictions. Mm. I'm free. Under the control of the government that says you can't drive in this area, you can't drive in that area because it's they're revegetating or whatever they're doing. So they're saying, hey, you can't, we're looking after this area. But you're still free to go wherever you choose. But then when we look at God, we say, hey, God, God has given us the free choice to choose. And with God, it's always choose Him or not choose Him. And then, and we know through reading the Bible that it tells us if you choose Him, you have life. And you have it more abundantly, like what you're saying. But if you don't choose Him, the Bible tells you that for the wages of sin is death. And then the last bit of that verse says that, but the gift of God is eternal life. Yeah. So it's always a choice. It's always a choice. You choose God. But however, a lot of the time we, we say we don't want to choose. I don't believe in God. By not believing in God, you're making a choice of choosing death. Because by choosing God, you then choose life. But if you're not choosing God, then you choose death without realizing it. And sometimes we go, well, I actually don't know what I believe. By not choosing, you've made a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, do you want to come to my party? Oh, I don't know. Well, by saying you don't know, you've already chosen because you, you're not going there, you're staying here. Yeah. Okay? So, so with, with free will, it's, it's up to us. And I'll, I'll look at the verse in Matthew chapter 11, you know, about the yoke. And we get, uh, get given a choice. Do we, out of our own choice, choose to have the yoke of God? Who is then in charge of that yoke? Who is in control of that yoke? Yeah. And it's big, because he's in charge of that yoke, he's the one that's controlling, directing my life, directing which way I should go for the benefit of my life and for him. You know, so, so I have to then go, I have to make the right choice. If I want to put on a yoke, I want to put on the yoke of God because I know that whatever he does or whatever direction he points me in, or whatever he does for my life is for my benefit. That's gonna be for the betterment of me as a person and then for those that are around me as well. Yeah. So I have to make that choice consciously. So as I do that, I go, well, 
I'm going to put on that yoke, and the person in that control is God. <clears throat> but it's my choice to choose to put on that yoke. And I'm free to roam. And you know, the yoke, as you know, with bulls and as you work with animals, you know, they don't always go in the direction that you want them to. So they, they roam a bit, and you just sort of yank them back. They roam here, you yank them to straighten them up. And I think for us, it's like that. God gives us the free choice to roam, but because He's eternally, essentially, He's in charge, He will direct us back into a straight path once more. Also, having that yoke, we have to do our part as well mm. by His help <coughs> and by His guidance and stuff like that because we're in it together. We're working together as a team mm. by giving us that choice. Mm. Uh, it's not just you going off in, into one direction and He going off in the other direction. Mm. Because then the yoke's not working. That's what you're doing. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I think that, that that's a big thing that we have to do our part as well. We can't just sit back and expect God to perform miracles for us, mm -hmm. and, and not us do our own part as well. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Some very beautiful thoughts there. I think we'll wrap up for today, and um, I'd like to invite you to join us for our next section, which will be called "If We're Saved by Grace." Why are we judged by our works? I'd like to invite you also to like, share and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the videos down below.